The Untold Truth About Money Money can be created. At some point in time, all of us have been awestruck by successful entrepreneurs. We wonder how they manage to amass billions of dollars in one lifetime. But unfortunately, at times, we also get swayed by Hollywood stereotypes. Let me tell you something. There is no nobility in poverty. I have been a rich man and I have been a poor man and I choose rich every fucking time. Because at least as a rich man, when I have to face my problems, I show up in the back of a limo wearing a $2,000 suit and a $40,000... Mr. Lewis, if you were to get control, and I don't think you will, but if you did, what do you plan to do with the company? Break it up and sell off the pieces. I'm sure you understand I'm not thrilled at the idea of your turning 40 years of my work into your garage sale. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Greed clarifies, cuts through, and captures the essence of the evolutionary spirit. We feel the ultra-rich are corrupt and inhumane cronies who haven't sweat a drop, but this thinking is one of the giant blocks stopping us from getting rich. We looked up several of the world's wealthiest entrepreneurs and we found that most of them are self-made, including Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, or Mark Zuckerberg. And history is littered with such examples. Even John D. Rockefeller was once considered new money during the Gilded Age. So, what helped them succeed? In the 93 years of my life, depressions have come and gone. Prosperity has always returned and will again. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. And that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Well, in most cases, it is their passion, a dream or a will to have a better life. Identifying that one motivation can get us past the mental block of self-doubt. It releases our mind from thinking, can we do it? And pushes us to think, how can we do it? Money is just a byproduct. We were researching the origins of money and found out how money first came into existence. Before money existed, people bartered or exchanged one good for another. So if you had a bag of rice and I had a pair of slippers, we could exchange them directly without using money. But what if you wanted to buy a dress in exchange for rice? Well, you can imagine how hard it was to find a buyer and seller both possessing the goods they wanted to exchange. When people realized this bottleneck, they created the concept of money as a common medium of exchange. But this also brought the idea of perceived value, which we still use daily. The higher value we assign to a good or a service, the more we're willing to pay for it. So ultimately, if you want to get rich, we want to think more about how can we create value? How can we solve significant problems at scale? Instead of how can we make money? When you are constantly looking for money, you build a product to give away the product. You don't know how to make money. When you're using your own money or your fam friends and family money, you start to say, what can I build that people are willing to pay for? If my customers don't want it, why am I building it? Am I solving the pain points? All the correct actions to take became crystal clear. You see, when you don't know the right actions to take, it's because you don't have a defined purpose. You're addressing the marketplace selfishly. You're saying, I need to, you know, I need to make some money. Most successful entrepreneurs, they came up with billion dollar solutions to more significant real world problems. So the bottom line is that the bigger the problem we solve, the higher the value we create. And the higher the value we make, the more money we create. Money needs to be managed. Making millions of dollars to lose it in the next minute is not how you create generational wealth. While making money is essential, it is equally important to know how to manage it. We have all heard many stories of ultra-rich individuals going bankrupt. Researching this phenomenon, we found the top reason behind it. Spending more than you have. 
To explain with an example, Shaquille O'Neal, a former NBA player, blew up his first million dollars in just 48 hours. He ended up in debt two days later. And this is the case with a majority of ultra-rich sports personalities. They earn millions every match, but go bankrupt just five years into their careers. However, Shaq learned from his mistakes. He took the advice of Jeff Bezos and started saving 75% of his income. He also got financially educated and began investing his hard-earned money into sound investments. As a result, he became one of the very first investors in Google and currently owns an empire of $400 million. You save that. That's 50. Mm -hmm. that he said rich people will say, okay, I'm saving 50 and I'm doing that. But he said the wealthy does this. You save that. This, ball out. House, chain, car, whatever you want. But 75. Save it, yeah. That's what he said. We all need to learn from Shaq and know our limits. We don't need to live below our means, eating only canned beans to save up all our money. However, we also don't need to end up in debt, buying Mercedes if we can't afford it. To capsulize, we need to follow three thumb rules. Align your expenses against your income. Have an emergency fund set aside for bad times. And live within our means. Also, if we want our money to grow, we should know how and where to invest it. Investing is a personal affair. We continuously try to figure out where we should invest our money. We're lured by higher returns, trying to copy other investors, or getting confused by many available investing options. But on researching how most successful investors invest, we learned one thing. Investing is not a competition. Instead, it needs to be aligned with our personal goals. So in a nutshell, goal-based investing um, is client-centric. It starts with the investor and it is tailored to uh, their particular goals. So portfolio construction matches the risk tolerances and the investor preferences. Um, so each portfolio is aligned to a goal. We researched seven things these successful investors keep in mind while investing. One, return requirement. What it means, higher our return requirement the riskier the investment we need to invest in. Where to invest. Investments in stocks and crypto offer maximum return, but also have the maximum risk. Who should invest? Young investors can bear more risks because they have a long life ahead to earn the money back. However, older investors need to be more careful with how much risk they can take on. Two, risk-taking capacity and willingness. What it means. Lower the risk-taking ability and desire. Safer the investments we need to invest in. Where to invest? Bonds and T-bills offer fixed returns implying lower risk. Who should invest? These are more appropriate investments for investors who depend on their investment's income stream to meet their expenses, such as retirees. Three, time horizon. What it means. The longer the time horizon, the riskier the assets we can invest in. How it works? With a long investment horizon, investors don't need to worry about the interim ups and downs or the timing of the market. Where to invest? Stocks, real estate, and index funds offer significant returns over the long investment horizon. Four, taxability. What it means. The higher the tax bracket, the more we need to invest in tax-exempt securities. Where to invest? Municipal bonds are tax-exempt, therefore their lower return is equivalent to the higher return of taxable investments. 5. Liquidity What it means The higher the liquidity requirement, the safer the investments we need to choose. We must select investments that meet our upcoming payment goals, such as a children's college education expense where to invest. Term deposit or fixed deposits offers a fixed interest rate and matures at a predetermined time. Therefore, these can be easily aligned within our payment goals. 6. Legality What it means Geographical or statutory constraints restrict our investments. For example, some countries prohibit direct investment in foreign countries. Where to invest 
If we still want to invest in foreign stocks, we can invest indirectly through depository receipts framework. 7. Personal Beliefs What it means Our religious beliefs and moral compass drive us away from investing in some sectors. For example, some investors avoid investing in tobacco or alcohol-producing companies. Where to invest? Any investment that meets all other factors and doesn't contradict our personal beliefs. These individual factors often work simultaneously, creating a deeper moat around our investment possibilities. For example, our return requirement gets constrained by our risk-taking capacity or liquidity needs. Therefore, we must find the right blend and invest in a diverse portfolio. The most people start to invest in their own business. Money follows the global economic cycle. Our personal goals guide us in managing our money under certainty. However, understanding world dynamics is crucial when uncertainty looms large. We're shooting in the dark without considering the global economy, not knowing what will happen next. Therefore, we delve deeper into some global historical events, and these have impacted how money has evolved in the past. Our perception of money can dramatically change overnight. Initially, money was pegged against gold. Even in 1944, when the Bretton Woods system established the US dollar as a reserve currency, money was convertible to gold. However, in 1971, US President Richard Nixon completely abolished gold convertibility leading the world into a fully fiat currency regime. It's inflated the value of the US dollar that we currently experience. Global superpower status gradually keeps changing hands over time. Ancient Egypt, the Ottomans, the British, the Spanish, the Dutch, and many others have led the world at some point. Post-World War II, the US emerged as the global superpower, and currently, China is giving it historically the most challenging fight. First is that China's economy is probably not going to collapse like so many have been warning. A slower growth, yes, but not the kind of sensational crash you hear about. That means this is more of a distraction than anything. A story to shock you. Analyzing the past shows how the present and expected economic scenario can affect the wealth's creation in general. We understood that. On average, such events can drastically change the world economy over 50 years. A recent pandemic is a similar event that has significantly impacted the global economy. Assessing the post-pandemic economic scenario, we find out the global economy is undergoing recessionary turns. Emerging market countries are experiencing a drain of foreign investments. Investors are putting their money in safe haven assets such as the US dollar and gold to protect against value erosion. Many economists expect a course-changing global event to occur shortly. In the event that uh, enough investors were, were to basically say, I want physical gold, I want the gold delivered, we would have a run on gold that would be incredible. And I, and I also think we've had such uh, fiat currency debasement globally um, that yeah. I think people are looking at gold as a safe haven. Therefore, we realize that our money decisions need to be aligned with the prevention of value erosion. We want to grow seeds of our wealth wisely. The only way to get rich these days is to be on the production side of the equation. There will always be consumption. This has been our thesis on various important aspects of money to help you perceive them differently. Did you like our video or would you like to add something else here? Leave us a comment and let us know your thoughts about it. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to help us grow. Thank you and we'll see you next time.